All right, there we go. All right, welcome back to another episode of Sawyer and Simpson here to talk about the first weekend of the NC State baseball season, a sweep for the Wolfpack. I'm Alex Sawyer. With me, as always, Andrew Simpson, and we're joined off the top today by Brett Austin. He's been on before, uh, obviously a former NC State player, now on the NC State coaching staff. Brett, how, how are you doing, man? I'm good. I appreciate you guys having me on. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for coming on, taking your time. Just, I guess <laughs> we had you on, I think, two years ago. So a year and a half late on this, but congrats on the, the job at NC State. But what's that been like, you know, coming back to NC State in this role and kind of being on the other side of things on the coaching staff? It's good, man. I'm I'm really enjoying it. I uh, How I got the gig is I was texting Hart one day, just kind of messing around, just saying, hey, man, find me a job in college baseball. And as I was a bullpen catcher with the Nationals, he texted me probably, I can't remember the exact month, the day our volunteer left, do you want the position? And I was like, well, is there any way to actually finish out this season with the Nationals? Then I'll be there as soon as I can. And sure enough, he said, no, we needed you here about a week ago. So <laughs> give, give me about two and a half weeks. I'll, let me talk to these people. I'll figure it out. But, yeah, I want the position. And ever since I took that position, it, it's been great. Like, I love working with the guys. love working with the catchers and the hitters. And to me, it's been a godsend just to be back in Raleigh and be back around my wife and – you know, I can't, you can't beat that. What was that also like? You obviously you're with the big league club, right? You're traveling with them. You're basically part of the team at that point. And, you know, knowing that you're going to say, all right, I'm going back to Raleigh. Obviously your wife's here and, and a lot that changes a lot, right? When you get, once you get married and you want to be, you know, close to your wife and, and whatnot, not away from her, but, you know, obviously you're living that kind of big league dream, so to say. Um, and then you got to come back and, you know, you're going back to work with, you know, college kids. And how, what is the difference of preparation and, and what guys in the big leagues do compared to how the college game works? I would say there's a lot of similarities between what our guys do now and what they do in the big leagues. Obviously, in the big leagues, they're very, very meticulous about how they go about their routine, their pregame routine, their work ethic. Um, but to be honest, it, it's been – it's been pretty good. Like it's been basically the same game. Um, been fun to work. How, with much, how much of that routine do you bring to those guys now? I know you work with Kozar and, and, you know, now Peebles before every game, like does that, obviously you did that when you played, but does that transition from your time with the nationals? You know, I take bits and pieces of what Jan Gomes and Kurt Suzuki. So my first year we had Kurt Suzuki, Jan Gomes as our two catchers. So I take, a lot of what we did with their pregame routine, and I implement that with what we got with Jacob Cozart and Cannon Peebles and even Drew Lanfear. Um, I picked their brain, talking about Jan Gomes and Kurt Suzuki, about what their philosophies were with their catching. And I give these guys a little. Oh, boy, we lost. What those guys did in the big leagues. I had my dad calling on that, so I apologize. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're good. Tell Bill to hold on. Yeah, Bill, Bill needs to pipe it down a little bit. <laughs> Being on the on, on a college coaching staff now, it's so – there's always been transfers in college baseball, but obviously now it's more than ever. In all college sports, you guys had transfers come in last year, quite a few, probably even more this year. Just what's it like kind of working with new guys and kind of, you know – I guess being able to pick their brains, see how they've been going about things and bring that in and just how does that kind of gel together when you do have now five, six, seven guys coming in that have played college baseball at a bunch of different places? I'll tell you what, the transfer portal and combine that with NIL, it's, it's been it's been challenging to say the least. It's, uh, yeah. I mean, Josh Fisher and Josh Pike, I, I, I applaud those guys tremendously with, I mean, they were sitting there at the computer for – I mean, hours a day, literally refreshing the transfer portal, looking at guys, looking up their stats, throwing up guys on the board of roles that we need to fulfill for our upcoming season because we obviously with the draft and then seniors, you lose a bunch of guys. So it's challenging in that regard. And then when you get the transfers in, you just kind of pick their brain. But when you get a guy like Trevor Candelaria, Parker Nolan, Carter Trice, and these guys, you kind of let them be because they're older. Um, they're pretty established. And if you look at their numbers – 
it's it's pretty solid. So you, you sit there and you, you let them do their thing for about a month or so. Then you start kind of really digging in on what you want to do with them with adjustment wise and picking their brains on their cues, what their thought process is, because obviously what Davidson, we, I'm sure it's pretty similar to what we do at NC State, but sure. you, you got to kind of earn their trust and figure out what they're thinking and what they want to do. So it is challenging, but at the same time, it, I think we got some pretty good players in the transfer portal. I'm going to switch over to, to Kozar, obviously one of the best receiving catchers in the country, right? Um, we saw that last year, saw it kind of first weekend. Um, I mean, he turned it on offensively too at the end of last year. But what do you see in Kozar that makes him so good? What is it from the catching standpoint that he's able to work with pitchers and get them, you know, strikes and, and whatnot? Why is he one of the best in the country right now? To me, I, I think it's, He's got long levers, so he's got long arms, to, which to me is a big advantage to being a catcher. If you're a 6'2 with a wingspan of whatever, 6'7, you can get that low pitch a little bit better. And with We his, didn't have that, did we? No, we did not. We, we had me. <laughs> the short I, I, I look back on video now, watch me catching Carlos, and I want to vomit. But if you look back <laughs> historically with Luca Tres, Patrick Bailey, Kozart, I think these guys were top 10 in the country and strikes looking above average and some of the other receiver uh, metrics that we have. But to me, Kozart's done a, a heck of a job with managing the staff. Obviously, his move working into the baseball is quick and subtle, which to these umpires, man, we can get calls. We got track man set up every day during our inner squads, and he can get those pitches that are two to three baseballs in or out. And I think his That's one insane. bugaboo last year was – was up and down and a lot of umpires just will not call that strike up, which you got to kind of tailor your, your, your skill set and your move to these guys that you have each and every single night, but he's done a heck of a job. And the one thing that we really worked on this off season was his blocking. So I think his blocking struggled a little bit last year. If you look at some of the metrics, it wasn't top tier, but um, I think. Was Is that just a mentality thing? I think it's a little bit of mentality, but also some of the setup. Cause when I first got here, uh, Chris Hart, our associate head coach, we talked about, he said, hey, we're, we're knee down just about every single day with every single guy. And I'm like, hey, I, I'm all for that. But some guys it may work for and some guys it, it may not work for. And yeah. we experimented with that in the fall. And he had <laughs> his mishaps in the fall with going just right knee down with a runner on and left knee down just receiving and vice versa. But um, I think you got to find what works best for you. And now that we've made those necessary adjustments, I think it's – Receiving is going to get better or continue to get better, and blocking will continue to improve. So I've been very, very happy with him and Peoples in that regard. Andrew Drew Fear. You, you talked – you, you briefly mentioned there just managing the staff for Jacob Kozart. Just going into year two now and having a lot of those guys back on the pitching staff. You know, you lost a couple, but most of those guys back. Just how have you seen him kind of progress there and the way he manages those guys – through last year, you know, starting as a freshman and now coming into year two with some familiarity there. Just how has he grown there? Well, I think that's huge. I think when you have the catcher that's caught some of your veteran pitchers, I think they almost subconsciously establish that trust in a way where, you know, it's, it's almost unexplainable. But, you know, one thing I put a big emphasis on in the fall is I, I put together a game management chart to where it's just, talking to these guys, hey, if you get two quick outs, say, hey, we're not done yet, finish your inning, let's go. If you get 0-2 on a hitter, 1-2 on a hitter, like, hey, we, we need to put this guy away. And some of the stuff that we talk about are the nonverbals and the verbals with maybe a catcher patting his glove on the dirt to, hey, spike this spike this breaking ball for a head, 0-2, 1-2. Like, little things like that, I think it goes a long way. Um, and Cozart's made tremendous strides with it. And even with Cannon Peoples, he's a freshman, and to me, he's – the best at managing the staff that I've seen at such a young age. And a lot of guys really love throwing to him. And also they love throwing to Cozart. And that's kind of the intangibles that I learned as a professional player where I didn't really put too much emphasis into it when I was in college because I, I just really didn't know. I was pretty naive to that factor of the game. But I think both of those guys are getting better each and every day with that. I think that's what you saw from, you know, Bailey, too. I thought Bailey, his freshman year, he was so grown in that aspect that he was, like, able to walk out to – and I don't remember the guys that he was, you know, catching, but being able to walk out to a 
senior pitcher or a junior pitcher and be able to talk to him in a big spot as a freshman, that's like, well, that's way beyond years of, that's huge. of yeah, like yeah. any experience that you can carry. Yeah, no, that's uh, it, it sounds kind of eyewash and, and fundamental and elementary, but we actually work on what to say during pitchers. Like I, I put together a sheet in the off season where, hey, what kind of personality does Lawson have? What kind of personality does yeah. Whitaker have? Is he a guy where you got to like, you got to get in him a little bit or you got to like fluff him up. So we put together this sheet to kind of understand the different personalities, because when you're a catcher, man, like you got to understand that you're dealing with a whole plethora <laughs> of personalities. Like it, you, you got to figure out which makes what, what makes each guy click, maybe yelling at a guy like Carlos. I had to get in Carlos and say, Hey, you're better than this. Like, let's go. And trying to figure that out, but putting it on paper, I think these guys have a better understanding of how to deal with each and every single individual first going out there and just giving your generic like hey man let's go so you were a fluff guy i was a mix of both like you carlos were, you were you no i'm just saying you as a person you were a fluff guy that would have been yeah. my personality trait to you yes and no i mean dude i'll tell you this like not to give the pr answer but when Hart yelled at me at a campbell game <laughs> it, it, it wouldn't fluff at all. Like I, I cannot repeat what he said, especially on this podcast. But I'll tell you this: it was the opposite of fluff, and I'll tell you, yeah. how I responded to that. So you no, got to kind of no, figure I mean, out what works for these guys. You're right. And it's different situations too that that call for the fluff and that call for the hey, let's dig in right here. Yeah. No. Exactly. And I think both of our guys, and even Lance Fear, like he's a converted infielder to a catcher. He's exceeded my expect expectations with his game management and dealing with different personalities because he's somewhat of an introvert which is tough to be an introvert as a catcher like yeah. you got to be vocal back there you got to be verbal but he's done an exceptional job yeah now um, how long um, oh, go ahead Alex. no you, you, you're, you're good. good um right. i was gonna say so obviously it's been 10 years you know since since you went to omaha as a player you're making me feel um, old man hey <laughs> I wasn't even playing, so it makes me feel older. Um, <laughs> but, you know, 10 years and uh, kind of two-part question here. So, obviously, that team was very close, close-knit group, older group of guys. They kind of knew the knew the railroad that needed to be taken to get to where you guys want to go. This year's team, 21 new guys. How have you seen the kind of – team aspect come together obviously guys are coming in from transfer portal different schools across the country um, high school guys coming in highly talented big mix of of personalities and and whatever it may be how have you seen that come together to where you guys could possibly make another run you know obviously it's after you know second week of the season but you know how much that plays into getting to a big spot in omaha yeah, no, you're 100% right. I think it's a good question because, like you said, we're dealing with a lot of players that are new to this program, and it's hard because you're you, right now in our situation is pretty unique because we got a lot of guys that we're rotating, we're platooning, and those guys are fighting for a job, so they're they're focused a lot on themselves. Where if we can, we put a lot of emphasis on this in the fall, and obviously this last weekend and yeah. throughout the spring where. Hey man, like if you can put the team first, just you, you need a win. Like we, we have to win. And we're trying to get these guys to buy into that. And I think they're doing a really, really good job of it. I think we can do a better job of it. But right now, like that to me, obviously, you know this. When you're junior, you're worried about the draft. When you're a sophomore, you're, you're mm -hmm. trying to play for Team USA or Cape Cod, try to get in the elite summer ball tournament or uh, summer ball uh, league. So it's, yeah, there's a lot of things that go into it. But I would say in that regard, we bring in a lot of people that have high character, which is good for our program because I think some of these guys like Trevor Candelaria, to me, like he's come in, he's more of a quiet kid, but we're almost pushing him to say, hey, man, like step up. Like people respect him. They listen to him. He works hard every single day. He plays hard. If you watch the kid run down the bases, like it's a hard mm -hmm. night every single time, even if he pops up to the pitcher, like he's trying to get on second base. And so – if we can get these guys just to buy in to play hard every day and want to win for their teammates, I think we're going to be a very, very special team. And I'll go back and the second part of that question. I mean, I talked about on the broadcast this weekend, 
when you guys sat in that Wake Forest hotel room. <laughs> I mean, it was 27 guys in one little hotel room and hashed out the issues that were, you know, at hand at that, at that point. You know, you guys were struggling offensively, you know, pitching, whatever it may have been. How much does that play into or how much did that play into the success that you guys had in that 2013 season? When you say the Wake Forest, what series? Do you, you remember about? that? I don't. 2013. I'm an you old don't man. remember? Like, you guys. I forget a lot of things now. So 2013, you guys were playing Wake Forest. I think you lost Friday night, and it was either you, Trey, Carlos, Fincher, whoever it might have been, literally called the team meeting, and you guys sat in a hotel room and just hashed it out. And it was all 27. Um, and I'll never forget it because it. I think it was Fincher asked if I go sit in, <laughs> making sure there. I guess I, do I don't remember know, no fights or that. yeah. So to me, yeah, but I mean, like, no, it's, yeah. So you know where I'm trying to get to. Like, how much does that play into? Like, you have to. I and I always said this to the team as well. You know, you got you got teammates and you got friends. When you're on the field and you're playing, you got to be teammates, and it's two different things, right? How yep. much does that play into? when you have new guys on the team and when you're trying to get to it, Omaha, how much does that play into it? I think it's huge. I think that's the biggest factor for us to actually come together as a team, have those leaders to hold their teammates accountable. I think that's everything. And I think we're not doing the best job of that right now with this team, which I think we will. Um, once guys kind of get comfortable with, with calling teammates out, which I think is perfectly fine. Like, I think you actually have to because it comes better. It comes off better from a teammate versus coming from me, Coach Avent, Coach Hart, yeah. Clint Chrysler, Josh Pike, all those guys. So I think now uh, once these guys kind of get comfortable, and I think they are, and they buy into what we're trying to do and be, become one unit, I think – like I said, I, I really like this team, but I think that's kind of the missing part right now. And that's the one thing we've been harping on these guys each and every single day. And they've done a lot better job with it here recently. So, No, it's, it's great. Um, I got a couple more. Andrew and I talked last week, and we kind of saw it in the first week of the season, small sample size of Peyton Green being a guy that – we expected to take a step forward that we'd kind of heard was really had done really good work in the off season to be there, had a really good opening week. Just how have you seen him grow and just what kind of ceiling does that kid have? Because you watch him play. He's, <laughs> he's special. Yeah, no, he, like I always mess around. I, I call him TJ Trey jr. <laughs> and I know that's, that's big shoes to fill, but to me, the first time I saw the kid, I think, his upside could be as high as as Trey. Like I, I and I know that's pretty high expectations to say the least. But Peyton to me is an absolute stud. Like I think last year he might have doubted himself just a little bit, which is normal. Like when you turn down a lot of money in the draft, which Cap, you know all about. With, with <laughs> I don't know all about. <laughs> There's a lot of pressure that goes into that, but I think there might have been a little bit. A pressure with him last year and I think now that he's relaxed a little bit and just understands what he's doing with his routine um playing summer ball I think this this summer in the cape helped him a lot and I think he's a, little, a lot more comfortable with shortstop like he's been a rock star mm -hmm. at shortstop so far and throughout the spring to now he he's made strides tremendously and I just think that if he can continue to make those steps each and every single day like to me the, the sky's the limit with that kid he, he's an absolute stud Yeah, he was – I mean, just watching him this this past weekend, it was like the game just slowed down. It was like – yeah, last year you could see him taking bad routes to the balls and, you know, kind of getting himself into awkward throws and, and, you know, awkward positions of where he had to catch the ball. Um, but this weekend he looked great. I mean, making good throws on the run, made that nice throw at the home plate to on the cutoff. It just yeah. looks and, and you, like when you play with confidence, obviously the the game just slows down. And when that slows down, I think, like you said, I mean, he's a he's an absolute stud. Yeah, and I, I almost think it's like that for almost any player at, at this level, especially Peyton Green, where he's turned down, like I said, X amount of dollars, probably yeah. a million. Where 
you put this pressure on yourself, you, you want to go out there, you want to go four for four every night, you want to sit there and you want to play shorts up every night, make zero errors throughout the season. But to be honest, it's, it's an unrealistic goal Baseball. to have. Like, and, you, and I'm sitting there, like, it feels the weight of the world on your shoulders. Like, I, I feel his pain, but I think now that he's relaxed, he's able to slow the game down. I still think he can turn up his little his internal motor for the mm-hmm. game and play quicker because he's quick, man. Like, he's a fast yeah. kid. So I think there's room for improvement there. But to me, I, I couldn't be happier with him. He's playing his butt off right now. He's playing with confidence. And to see that, it, it makes me happy. Yeah, I have one more question on, you know, personnel. We talked about Trey Turner there. You obviously played with Trey Turner in a very different way of comparison. How fast is Michael Gupton? Like how jaw-droppingly Ooh. fast is watching him run? <laughs> I was actually joking with him the other day. We were uh, – I think it might have been a, a, a base running situation where it was first and third. I was like, hey, if you get picked off, if you're still here, stay in the rundown. I was like, if you stay in the rundown, you're going to bully these kids just like you bullied our infielders when we do rundown <laughs> in our practice. I was like, just do exactly what you did in our practice and you will be just fine. Like, they, they cannot contain you. And Michael Gupton, hey, he's, he, he's a stud, man. Like, he – he's – I'm telling you, like, Trey Turner to me was the fastest kid I've ever played with, played against, I've ever seen in pro ball, and Gupton exceeds that on another Him and I kind of have similar body types in that number 19 jersey. I don't know if you can see it or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, very very similar body types. (laughs) I mean, he's like the most jacked freshman I've ever seen. Dude, he's built like a Greek god. I I give him crap. He really is. He's wearing medium-sized shirts. (laughs) <laughs> and I, I, I've seen his brother. His brother literally just looked just like him, but maybe a, a little leaner. But to me, younger, Gupton, he, uh, he's older by three years, I believe. OK. And Gupton is the greatest kid. One of the hardest workers I've ever been around. Wants to get better. But I'm telling you, he is the fastest human being I've ever seen on the bases. And you saw it in Durham when we had the exhibition game. He, he tried to steal second, got picked off, stole, got a bad jump at second base horrible jump at second base and got thrown out barely at third. So I think if he could learn to almost be a little bit more meticulous, almost like Trey with his base yeah. stealing, I think he could steal unlimited amount of bases. So are you saying he's faster than Trey? Can we can we get yes. that on record? Yeah, I'll put that on the record. Hands down, <laughs> 100% faster than Trey. All right. I'm sure Trey will see this too. Good. I hope he does. <laughs> <laughs> Hope he does. Well, that's all I got for you, man. I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you guys having me on. Yeah, thank you so much. We'll um we'll chat. Good luck tomorrow night. Appreciate it, boys. Have a nice drive down to Myrtle. Oh man. Three and a half hours. I'm looking forward to it. Dirty Myrtle. (laughs) Have a good time. Good luck. We'll see you guys. Appreciate it again. See you, bye. See you. Thank you. All right. That's fun. He's good. Um, yeah, Gupton. baseball. <laughs> yeah, I. I'm, I'm like now. I'm, I want to see the kid just. I he had, he was in like a sack fly situation on Saturday, I believe, and he t- or maybe Sunday, and he took off, and I was like just staring at him. I was like, yeah, he's definitely fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. He. Yeah. Seeing him get a chance on the bases at some point this year, which obviously he will, even if he doesn't play, that's a guy you put in. Like Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to see him stealing some bases because it's just fun to watch someone with that kind of speed do that. But um, good weekend for NC State. You know, (laughs) start off with a sweep. That's always good. We talked last week about that first weekend of the season, especially when you're playing a team like Wagner – it's about yourself. It's about doing the good things. And I think for the most part, NC State did pretty much everything you could want from an opening weekend. Three wins, two of them dominant wins. One a close one, but one you you know battle back, you have good at-bats in. So overall, I think nothing to really be unhappy about. No, I, I thought they played you know pretty quality baseball. Um, the starting pitching for me stands out. Yeah. You know, obviously Whitaker goes seven. Uh, seven scoreless, and then Wilson struggles early, but then just becomes Wilson. And uh, I, I feel like you see that a lot from him. He may struggle early on in you know the second or third, and then he just bounces back and he's just dominant 
he got himself into, I believe, the seventh as well. And then, um, you know, the the young gun on on Sunday, Britain, you know, I thought he looked good. His misses weren't big misses, and I kept saying that on the broadcast. You know, like his fastballs were missing maybe two balls off, a ball off. So did nothing like crazy. Um, but, yeah, the starting pitching to me was was very good for opening weekend. Yeah, yeah, that's a big thing for it to be opening weekend. Pitching staff as a whole, six walks, 22 strikeouts, only five extra base hits allowed for the February. That's very, very good. And you you mentioned Whitaker, starting with him, just what he did last year. And I think one of the things last year that was a really big strength of his was he was efficient and he got mm-hmm. himself deep in the ball games. He threw 79 pitches and yeah. <laughs> made seven innings. If this is April on the ACC play, he's maybe throwing a complete game there with the way he was pitching. Um, I, I mean, he was just on. No walks, three strikeouts, seven innings, five hits. And in that first game, he was on. And from the very first inning of the game, the team was just hitting. 19 hits. Eight guys had multiple hits in that game. Just a very, very good start to your season because – the bats were there. The pitching was good. The guys that came out of the bullpen, you know, a couple walks, but still for the most part were pretty good. So that's a good opening win. Peyton Green, three for three in that game with two walks, you know, re- reaching base five times. Jacob Cozart, who we talked about a lot with uh, Brett Austin, had a big opposite field home run. So a really good start offensively, a really good start on the mound. No errors in those first two games. That changed a little bit on Sunday, but th- those things are good. Yeah, I, I thought the offense, obviously Friday, um, I didn't see much of the game Friday, but, you know, obviously you can look at it and say that they were aggressive um, from the get-go. And then, you know, Saturday and Sunday, I thought that mindset kind of changed. Um, it was almost like they were looking for the perfect pitch, you know, and I, and I kept saying when guys aren't overpowering you, and don't get me wrong, Chabot from Wagner – he was spectacular on Saturday, you know, able to work his two seam. He was working a change up, working east and west with his fastball. Everything was very good. But I, I thought that NC State could have been just more aggressive on fastball. It's not an overpowering fastball. It was 87 to 89. So if you're more aggressive in those counts, you know, those early counts where he's trying to get ahead of you, that you can just attack fastball and hit all over the ballpark. And I think that's where they were trying to kind of pencil in and, and zone in on one specific little spot in the zone. And I think that's where they struggle to to really be on the offensive and, and do well. But yeah, I thought offensively you saw hits from everyone. Um, we talked a lot last week about Serrano, you know, bounces right in Friday night, gets exactly. two hits, um, you know, gets into that starting role has another hit on Saturday. Um, he did not play on Sunday, but, you know, I thought he looked very good for for basically coming in as a freshman and kind of living up to that, quote, unquote, you know, talent that everyone was talking about. Yeah, he was good. He he His swing, we, we talked last week about there had been a draft comp with Christian Yelich. His swing is smooth. And just it, it is. that left-handed lengthy just straight through the zone, just, yeah, he was good. Um it's also like every lefty swing always looks better too. I yeah. don't know why. They, they just do. I, I completely <laughs> agree with that, and it, I don't. I don't have an answer for it, but they do. But he he looks good. Um, you had some other guys play. Chase Nixon had two hits as well. Um, a guy that played very limited last year, but obviously has some talent. Peyton Green, we talked about six hits on the weekend, five RBIs. Um, you also got home runs from some of the new guys, Trevor or. Parker Nolan and Carter mm-hmm. Trice both hit pretty, pretty big home runs. Carter Trice is just on an absolute line, and then Parker Nolan's was a no doubter. Parker uh, Nolan was an absolute bomb. Yeah. I yes. think it. I think Trackman had at like four oh seven something like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, like you said, Carter Trice's home run was out quick. Yeah, that was on a line. Whew. But yeah, no, I mean, the guy had 17 home runs last year. Like yeah. it's yeah. there's nothing, power there. uh, yeah, like, <laughs> he, he has some power in there. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> he does. But those those guys were good. Trevor Candelaria had a couple clutch hits. He had a hit in that inning where they finally scored on Saturday that helped drive things home. And on Sunday, it took they won nine nothing, but you look 
at the game, and it took a couple innings to kind of get things going, and he had a big hit in that game as well. Um, you know, those guys are all good. Another guy that played very well, that pitched really well out of the bullpen was Baker Nelson, had two appearances, which yeah. for an opening weekend of the series, that's it's not something you always see, but through three innings, two hits, no runs, no walks. Um, pitching staff as a whole, we talked about again, you know, Again, three games, but they got a one ERA and six walks. You're you're very happy with that. And yeah, and I think they only gave up like five extra base hits. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I believe it was, and you know, one being the home run against Wilson. But yeah, I think if you're going to walk away from that weekend, say offensively, yeah, we're you know, we obviously have some work to do. But if you're at looking at the starting pitching, it's like all right, you know, we can roll with with those three and. Like I said, Dom Fritton on Sunday, he's going to be the guy that kind of just like either holds it together or then they're going to have to kind of mix in, you know, do we go high? We didn't even see high field this weekend. So I think that's fine, you know, obviously coming off an injury and whatnot. But, yeah, I thought everyone looked, you know, it's a it's a solid baseball weekend. You get you get the sweep and you get guys in, get see guys at bats. And I thought it was very good. Yeah, a lot of guys got at bats. That, a lot. That's a they have thing. a lot of guys that can come off that bench. <laughs> Yeah, they got guys in Friday, they got guys in Sunday, so being able to do that early is good. So good first week, now you move into a midweek game that is a very good early challenge. One of those that is kind of nice to have on the schedule to actually play someone that, you know, is a little bit better than, with no offense to Wagner or looking ahead to Belmont, but you get to go to Coastal on Wednesday. It's a Coastal team that last year took ECU to the final game of a regional beat Virginia in that regional, beat ECU a game in that regional. They lost a lot of people from that team, but it's mm-hmm. it's Coastal Carolina. It's a very, very good program that is going to yeah. keep bringing in guys. And to go there on a Wednesday, second week of the season, that should be a good, fun test. Yeah, and it's tough, too. you got to drive down the Myrtle. Um, you know, what is that, three-hour drive? Um, and then get out and play a good team. You know, they ranked – I think they are maybe picked – fifth in their conference this year which um i mean that's a very good baseball conference that they're in in the um sun belt so pick fifth to to finish but you know like you said it's just always a hard they're just a fundamentally sound baseball team where they're not going to make mistakes they're gonna they they chirp in the dugout and they they try to get after you in different ways to to kind of make you flutter and you know make mistakes but I'm excited to see kind of how NC State handles that because some guys, you know, haven't seen that before. It, you know, I don't – I wonder if the the Davidson boys have, have played them. I'm sure they have in their time at Davidson. But, you know, it's just a different scenario. You got to – you're away from home, see a new ballpark, and um, that will be a nice little challenge for them this week. Yeah, it will be. It's a nice ballpark, too. It's a bigger it's ballpark nice. than a lot of college baseball places. So it, yeah. it, it, it's a different experience. They started the year two and one. They host their little tournament that State played in. The reason I've seen their ballpark, State played in there four or five years ago. Um, and so I went two and one there. You know, solid start. But again, it, it's a good team. It's a good experience. And then you move forward to next weekend and you play Belmont, who, again, is a team where you should beat them. It's about do you play well, focus on yourself. It's a Belmont team that was pretty good last year. They lost in their conference championship game. They've moved conferences to a little bit tougher of a conference. They're in the Mm -hmm. Missouri Valley now, I think, which has a couple good programs. Austin P, Evansville, programs that have come played at NC State and won games before won games last year at NC State. So yeah, I was gonna say yeah. It it's was. one you can't overlook. It, it's like it's one of those weekend series where you hope you go in and you can win games. Focus on yourself, play good baseball, pitch like you did last weekend, try to do those things and just keep building early in the season. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, you know, it's a Belmont team that I think they had six home runs on Sunday. So, you know, showing a little power their opening weekend. But yeah, once again, it's just a I think what you saw this past weekend from NC State, Coach Haven, Coach Hart, you know, obviously Brett right there we just spoke to, trying to figure out a lineup. That was one thing you saw guys move up and down. You saw Souls kind of lead off, and then you saw Peyton Green lead off on Sunday. So 
I think you're going to see that for the first, I don't know, three weeks, two, two and a half, three weeks to just figure out like, hey, where do you guys kind of fit in and, and who kind of works off each other? So I think you're going to see that one again tomorrow. It's interesting who will start tomorrow, um, you know, just not knowing who's coming out of the bullpen and, and doing all that. So that'll be interesting. And then I'm interested to see after this past weekend who kind of solidifies that lineup. Like, you know, you could have Trice in the five hole, the four hole, the three hole. He can move all around. Same with Parker Nolan, Serrano. I mean, options are endless. It's just a matter of where they kind of fall into because they go, what is it, a, less than a month from now, maybe a month from now, they go to uh, Miami for their opening weekend. So it's three series and then Miami. So, yeah. So <laughs> you, you got to Miami to, to kind of solidify yeah. that. And then, um, kind of hunker down in the ACC play. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's it. That's the big thing to look for is just continuing to see who gets into that lineup. So many guys in so many spots fighting for things. Brett mentioned that, that there's a yeah. lot of competition there early in the season guys trying to figure it out. So that's fun to see. It makes these early series interesting, gives something for us to talk about. So <laughs> that's fun. Thank but, you. Yeah. Yeah. For real. Uh, Two years ago, and it was well. What's going to line up going to be? It's yeah, it's exactly the same. We, yeah, we happen. knew it every day. Yeah, but no, that's fun. So coastal on Wednesday, Belmont this weekend. We'll be back next week to talk about both of those. Preview, I think, and JIT is the series yeah, after that. So. It is, and then the week after that, we'll be talking ACC baseball. Sneaks up on you. So, um, yeah. That's all we got tonight. Thank you, everyone, for listening. If you're listening live, if you're listening to the podcast later, thanks for listening as always, and we will talk to you next week. Cool. This is where I lost you last time. I know we're still live, but I I walked out on Alec, and I just left. (laughs) And that's probably going to happen again. (laughs) Yeah. All right. right. Have a good night. Yep.